Hello, welcome back to Baron Saga. Well, our moral uh, is normal, so I guess we can leave and hope we won't starve. Uh, we probably will starve. Unless we encounter an event in which we'll get some supplies. <sighs> what did I do? Sick Bjorn wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him slip off his drunken stupor in the ground and this morning he's paying the price. Um we help him recover. But reluctantly your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrunch together for the morning war. When one offers him offers tea meat, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me says handing you his massive meat stain. Eventually Sigbjorn comes to you. I won't get into details, he says. I was supposed to bring those casks from Ravnik back to Borisgard. I drank my behalf by accident. Point is, Sigbjorn continues, you don't tell anyone what happened. I won't tell anyone about the meat you got, okay? Trust me on this one. We agree and get back to travel. Please, please, random events. Give me some food. A boy has gone missing from the caravan along with a good number of supplies. The boy's younger brother begins to sob. Some men in the woods made us, so we have to give them food or they'll kill us and don't tell nobody. My brother went over there. Points. Mm. Send the younger brother and ambush them on the next raid. That evening, the younger brother sets out with a bag of supplies, silently surrounded by fighters. Within an hour, the sound of a skirmish ring out. Soon, both boys return along with trivial fighters laden with supplies. Thank you. A mother's screams flood the caravan. Her daughter lies dead in a tent. We all know who did this, she spits, staring directly at the woman she scuffled with previously. Murder over a marriage? In these times? Something must be done. Teki's room remains silent. Investigate. A hero joins you in a, inspecting the young girl's corpse. An old infection, says the healer. No punctures, no choking, no poison. She died of disease. You report the news to the caravan. The mother admits that she had always known her daughter was ill, and everyone moves on. Why would you lie then? Just why? As we pass steep cliffs, the sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation, or our graves. The Slayer and the Slain. Finally, you arrive at Boar's Guard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions and are littered with the bodies of Dredge, Varl, and Man. Excuse the mess, shouts a voice from above the gate. Looking up, you spy a striking Varl, his face weathered with matted black hair. Movement at the gate catches your eye. Dredge are still banging on the gate doors, so clock. Let us in, you shout. Sigbjorn pushes past. I won't be hearing the end uh, of this for a while, he says before hearing. Open up, Bolverg! They dug me out of Ravenik! You hear a laugh echoing on the wind as the doors creak. A dozen armed men led by the massive Varl make quick work of the dredge and usher you into the city. You may be interested to know they brought a mender. You didn't go to get a mender. Where's the meat? Sigmund shrugs apologetically. I guess the mender will do. Either we've got a chance now or we're completely screwed. 
And look, we've come a long ways. Some as far as Kogo. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose. Listen, if you have something to tell him, say it now. Otherwise, you're on your own. I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you'll see me again. It won't be to talk. Mender, come along. We're going to see the governor. Bolvark and Singbjorn leave with Eowind, who goes willingly, signaling that he's fine. Then, this is just like First Valor of over, all over again. This is nothing like First Valor. The one in Berskin is probably leading the ravens. Ravens? Is that good or bad? It depends on who they're working for. Hopefully, it really is the government and not someone trying to stone Garm their way into his seat. I guess we wait for Eowyn to tell us, if he comes back. I'm not worried about Eowyn, I'm worried about the army of refugees we brought, who don't belong here. You're probably right, nobody ever uttered a nice thing about Borsgard. so what now? We ought to go to the docks and see what our options are, in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? What guards? I have a feeling the ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down. And when Bellower gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking his stride. Let's keep that to ourselves for now. So, the dogs? Oh no, first of all, the market. One gets one. That hurts. But we need at least five days worth of... When you get to the docks, your heart sinks. Not a long ship to be seen, aside from wrecks. Bodies float in the water. Buildings are trashed and boarded up. What happened here? murmurs Alette. They're all gone, says Eowyn, approaching alone. I see you had the same thought as me. Eowyn, you're okay? I'm fine. It wasn't a lie. The governor is here. He's in hiding. Why? Since the dredge started appearing anyone with a ship and half a week left long ago. People can't live by food. Food is scarce, the markets are bare. Boros Guard is a fire cake waiting for someone to tip it over. So the governor's paying the ravens to protect him against his own people. And keep the pay peace, so to speak. It's more like a massacre anytime there's a hint of an uprising. Where does that leave us? I promised him the Mendes protection in Arbrang. I don't think he's very popular there. They're going to start tearing this place down to build new ships. We can ride the Ormsa River all the way to the capital, leaving another perfectly good city behind. How long will it take to build new ships? Hold on, what happens to people living in Borsgard? It's the best I could do, Alet. He thought it could take as long as a month. We don't usually make ships out of scrap lumber. As soon as people figure out what's going on, there's going to be riots in the streets. A month? Why bother? Bella will be here within a week, if not sooner. I'm open to suggestions. Gods be damned! Is there no end to this? River rose in frustration, leaving you standing by the docks. Alet gives you a worried look before chasing after him. A wind. What do we do about Bellower? Eowyn says nothing for a moment. I don't know. Hmm. We don't have month worth of food. We find Ivor standing on the steel walls, overlooking the fields outside. Dredge are keeping their distance, but continue to gather. I'm okay, Rook. Ivor cuts you off before you can say anything. You know he's been through wars. Just feels like someone should cut us break every now and then. If we want to be standing a month from now, well, we're going to have to be prepared. What did you have in mind? 
first of our clansmen in the place to stay. We will get torn to pieces out in the streets. I'll keep an eye on the dredge up here. If they break through the walls, we're done for, so we'll have to keep them back. You could always use a hand with that. We need to know who's controlling what and make sure we get our cut. Food's going to become scarce. And when they start building those ships, we're going to have to keep people away. What a mess. I'll do what I can. Ivar explains. I'm leading attacks with a wind every time the dredge get too close to the gates. Listen, we're going to lose fighters and roll every day like this. I don't need to tell you what happens if nobody is manning this wall. We could always use help. Consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of this task will likely take a full day. First of all, find a safe place for caravan. The entire caravan has spread out in the streets where they attract more attention. We could look for a public house, suggests Annette, like Frostdale. You figured that if you made camp in the open, you could at least keep everyone together. Or with people living in the city recently, there might be an abandoned house you could squad in. Um. Let's put some people in charge and let them deal with it. I can't be here all the time, you will tell people who have traveled with you throughout thick and thin. I'm leaving you in charge of your own fate while we deal with the dredge. They agree and start dividing responsibilities among themselves. Ira points out the dredge along the wall. There's a lot more of them. And they're getting braver, he says. We lost a fair number of fighters since yesterday. We could use your help if there's nobody left to defend the walls. One of your clansmen from the caravan finds you. Just wanted to tell you that things are fine. People you left in charge are doing a good job. Even stopped some looters and sent them off with a little warning for anyone else thinking of coming after us. Swear, I even saw some of them smiling. He departs, leaving you to worry about other things. You consider? Okay. Put Krumr in charge of leading the warriors. Krum, you shout, calling around the war leader. This is your expertise. Are you willing? Krumr is more than happy to switch off leading the charge, giving Ivar a break between fights. He spends the rest of the day showing complex war strategies to reduce losses. Oh, there's a lot of them. This is bad, says Awind, as Ivar points across the battlefield. Aside from the fact that we're up to our necks in dredge, a stone singer showed up. We've been losing warriors left and right. If we don't deal with it, this wall will come down by the end of the day. Dad, there's a riot at the docks, so it runs up to you, out of breath. They're trying to smash up the boats. When you calm her down, she says the ravens are there, but she's worried that things could get out of hand. I will get to the rise. When you get down to the docks, it's pandemonium. Few work on the ships now as the ravens stand over bodies of people while a huge crowd roars in anger. Wolverk's axes are covered in blood. What happened? You shout, pushing your way through the rioters. What do you think would happen? This one ball over cool. Didn't take them long to figure out we were building ships right under their noses and they can't have one. You gonna lend a hand or just stand around? Uh, let's try calming them. You you brandish your axe low and try to find a voice over the chaos. It goes wrong quickly when one of the writers get a quick jab in, smashing across the bridge of the nose, covering your face in blood. The last thing you remember is falling backwards. By the time you, you regain consciousness, the riot is finally being driven off. Won't save the next time, you hear Bolver say. This one's free. Stack your back to the wall with a new injury. We don't have any more var this morning, says Ivar. I saw him. Bellowers here. With the number of losses we've taken, I'm sure it won't be long now. It will only sell me only stuff nearby. We need source of supplies. I checked around, Olive tells you, and nobody has food, or they won't part with it for a fair price. And our medicine has been gone for days. They're either gouging the price or it's just plain gone. She doesn't say it, but you can tell this is going to be a serious problem. Uh, 
track uh, down the ravens. You find the massive leader of the ravens along the docks, where they are doing their best to keep a growing number of people in check while, while the boats are being constructed. You question him about food and supplies. Should have brought your own. I can go giving it out to every person in Boris Guard. I'll kill every last bastard in the city for some good meat, though. This place has been dry for a week. Oh, for him, the meat. Let me get this straight. You happen to come through Ravenik with Sigbjorn in tow and plenty of meat to go around. Is that right? You yes, a little too long. All murder of motherless yaks. Goes Bolik as he turns to leave, he grumbles. Drink the barrels and we'll make a trade. The cavern protests when you tell them you deal, the deal you made, but when you return with more supplies than you expected, the complaints vanishes. Thank you. Ivor, you begin, can we really keep this up? Ivor looks like he hasn't slept for days. We've lost a lot of fighters, he mumbles. The weight of the situation is crashing. Then, from far in the distance, you hear a horn. Dredge, don't use horns, it occurs to you. A wind appears at your side with just as a long caravan of people coming to view, Dredge turning to attack them. Who is that? you ask. It can be, says A wind. He runs towards the gates, shouting, you see there, Banner? It's Haken! As you want the healthy glad here, the gates are halved open and you charge onto the field, clearing a path for Dredge. Okay, we are against Dredge, so she's fine. We'll take Awin. Do you want some knockback? back? Well, it gives you free strength. But do we really need knockback? back? Everyone has something, so let's stay with that. Okay, well, four slingers, three melee. You, I want the back. You want him. Okay. Why? Well, really, I hoped he would have killed him. One shot. That would be awesome. Okay, you can come over here and just finish this one. Well, we have Mender, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, he won't attack this turn. Yeah, we really will need to use the Mender. Eight armor goes like that. <laughs> and oh, she's dead. That wasn't worth it at all. Well, maybe he can heal her. Wait. No, he can't. No. Okay. If we can hit those two, but I need to get closer, arc lightning. Nice. Okay, since those Shatterstone won't explode, I need to give him some armor. Let's kill him first. Wait, they were supposed to explode. Oh, it's the other one. Kill him, that's something. Damn it.
We need to get him out of there. Yep. He really needs to get out of there. <laughs> Oh, they all have four. Do they have sword or head? Actually, I think that our initiative is fine. Oh, god damn it! Juno, I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Eowind. She smiles and they embrace. Eowind is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to see your call. I ran into problems. Problems is putting it lightly. There was a mile wide canyon, practically splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross, worse. Dredge are practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They are not coming from the north anymore. They are everywhere. We noticed. Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't. Haken becomes quiet when he motions toward you, you know. She got across somehow. Found her out cold for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Belower is here. Gods be damned, I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with the Bellower. Come on, no need to tempt him by standing out here. Hakon's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Borsgard. Haken joins you on the wall with his personal bodyguard, Mogur. Behind him the prince, Ludin, ascends alone, looking miserable. I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Eowind. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. It takes everything within Eowind's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook? Come with me. We'll return in two days, maybe less, if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. Where? Why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses and something shifts in your vision. Just for a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. You can find the words to argue. You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone, aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing toward an enormous storm ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up.
We are at the Godstone of Straths. We glance, we glance nervously around, but the dredge didn't seem to hear her. It's okay, you can speak. Softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? Juno smiles. Why could have come across as profoundly creepy, looks sincere instead. No, the dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Who are you? I wish we'd had time for proper introduction. My name is Juno, I am on the Mender Council. You've met Eiwind, my apprentice. How are you doing these things, controlling minds? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right. Mender, Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I am the only one who can influence another's mind. Then why not take control of the lower? I learned the talent to heal minds, not control them. Though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of the lower? It is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. The truth is, we are rarely a match for the Sundar anymore. Our advantage is that we can train more Valka. It is also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge, while the Sundar simply grow older and more powerful. The lower is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then how do we stop him? The gods, the god of secrets will play a part, as will you. What are we doing out here? Do you know the god of the god Straths? Few know this stone exists, even among those who have lived their whole lives in Boas Guard. While Dangle deals in fortune, Straths taught men the value of trade in a different way. He showed them it has consequence. Two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone? The gales up here wear away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of the silver. The god's strath is weathered by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded those, these weapons to a god, and they used them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The mentors call him the god of secrets. He was both. Why are we surrounded by dredge? They seem to be drawn to the godstone. There are many things we don't know about Straths. Maybe they see him as a patron, or it is an attraction they cannot explain. Does Straths have something to do with the serpent in Einartov? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicion. But until I've had time at the Mender libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge, it always seems as though we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Why did you pick me? Why did you take Eirind or Hakon? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting me in danger. A wind must keep both guard from falling while we are away. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Bull's guard. You were the only one I knew would, re would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Aled no matter what. Let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you will need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. We will forge it into an arrow to slay Belower. Wait, after everything you've told me, make a magic arrow to shoot Belower? That's all it takes? Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a far away look in her eyes. No, that is not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Belower. Even were it to strike his heart, he has no physical weakness. But it will sow doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, it will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he's dead. That is the most insane. He really can be killed? 
No, someday he will awaken and realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. First we must make the arrow, focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop, so be careful. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of silver vein. Even without looking out onto the dredge, you can feel each sinister face watching closely, held back only by Juno's influence. Panic faces through your blood. Uh, climb high, higher way might be easier. As you climb, you can help but notice the stony masks of dread line up before the godstone, like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. Dredge do not react. Look for another piece. While you're here, you, gla you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You're able to pry away another smaller piece of silver ore before you, your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says. As you walk back through the dredge, their heads turn in unison to follow the dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. You approach the gates of Boris Guard again, relief that they are still standing. It looks like they took a beating while you were gone. Alet rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept through the gates. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, take this time with your daughter, find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things to it I must attend, but meet me on the walls when you are done. Craft test, I guess. It takes a while, but you finally find someone willingly willing to craft an arrow for you. He eyes you suspiciously when you show him the silver, but shakes his head and gets started. As it watches, the smith's fire reflecting in her distant stare. I talked with Eamon all the time while you were gone. He told me a lot about Juno. Is she really as powerful as he said? It certainly seems that way. That might be the most luck we've had so far. That I think I know what's going to happen now. An arrow? She's going to make you shoot below her, isn't she? I don't know for sure. Come on, who else is going to do it? Iva? I'll let I know where this is going. You're afraid of me dying. This isn't like before, we can't run this time. That's not what I... Let me do it. What? Why not? Because you think I'll get her? What do you do when Belor comes straight for the person holding the only thing that can destroy him? Let me speak. Everything's changed. So skull grew for so long ago. I'm not asking because I'm afraid of losing you. I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Let me do this because you know I'm a better shot. I have a better chance of puncturing his armor. We only have one shot. I'm not a child anymore. I'm not just some girl. I'm your daughter. I can do this. For once, let me decide what happens to me. I know you can do this. Take it. She smiles and takes her hand in hers. You will survive this. I know we will. You sit by her side silently until, she smith, until the smith finishes his work. Do we really have this arrow or...? Mm. That's nice. There, there he is. Juno is in the middle of an animated debate as you approach the arrow in your hand. There is little time left, below her nose we're here. Whether he is waiting for more of his, force, of his forces to arrive or simply wants to starve us out first, I cannot tell. But he will not expect a direct attack. Is this a joke? How are we going to do that? 
It will take a handful of warriors to face him. I can keep a small group hidden from sight. The rest of you will lead the charge from here. The flag Belawar Below will send his armies away from himself to meet you. What about the ravens? They may protest. They will not. I've arranged a task for them. Even if you make it to the Belawar, what chance is there of defeating him? We saw what happened at Einartov. That thing can be killed. Juno shows them the arrow you had forged from the godstone silver. This will make him bleed like the rest of us. Once he's pierced, he will be vulnerable. She looks you in the eyes. We only have one. Do not miss. And bring only those you absolutely need. It will take all my concentration to keep the other dread from swallowing us up. I cannot join battle. And if we kill Bellower, then what? The dread will just wander away? That is my belief, yes, I can't say for certain. That is a doom plan. Help us hold out here until the ships are finished. And then what? Belawar will hound out our every ship step all the way to our barang where I am certain Monsundr await. I waste the time to speak to loved ones and the memory of any god that pleases you. Rest. In the morning we slay Asundr. We actually cannot rest so I feel. No, I think we yeah we healed. What else can we do? Let's promote everyone. Wait, because I'm gonna take either. I may take Mugur Chris. Odleaf? I think that's... Like, he's 12... Yeah, they are better. Especially if we do this. We don't have quite enough to level those both up. To promote them both. I think I'll do this. more armor and now we have one person but he has free strength only has this plus plus two armor for him plus one strength is this I guess I think that's better for her Yeah, I think we are ready to face the Sandur. The silence is what you remember. You rise in silence and walk through empty streets. Upon the wall, two armies stand quietly watching each other. Your footsteps echo on the wooden floorboards as you approach Juno. She breaks the silence. It's time, Juno says. Gather your allies. Today one thing will end, another will begin, and our actions will decide on which side we stand. Mm. Yeah, that's it. But I think this will grant me three archers to act first. Yeah. Okay, he has a couple of slingers. Seal your fear. Listen, I'll try to guide you. Oh, I think he can reach him. You cannot use the arrow until there is no chance of missing. Okay, uh, do you know what mind? I really need her to do this. But this means she'll probably die. I'm 
I need you to Feel your courage. You need to only slay Bellower. Hold them back for long. Captain, if he can't hit him. You must break through his armor, I know. Be used until his armor is broken. Yeah, I already broke his armor, so unless you mean his whole health as well. It's a lot. Keep below weakened. His strength will return. Safe. I'm trying. And the blow. Oh, he can move here. So I'll move. Oh. Yeah, they went for Juno. Can she use the no silver arrow? Okay. No, please help her. Hey, Strook, finish Blower now. Can't quite get to him. You can't get over. What? She was supposed to able to hit him.
careful, he will respond to every strike. Hard to control. Where are the menders? Rook, she is beyond their help. Stand up. You are only barely aware of the surrounding chaos as the wretch flee from varl warlords who push their advantage. The lower is dead. You are not. We must go. Let me carry Alet to Borsgard. We will honor her properly. Juno's right. With Belower fallen, Dredge flee the field of battle. You return to Borosgard but have almost no memory of doing so, aside from image of Alet's still body being carried in Ivar's arms. So we should have the time we need to finish the ships. I think you're right, the Dredge don't seem interested in us anymore. Since Belower fell, they've been going their own way. The ravens have been keeping the dogs clear. Juno's talking to them about something now. When those long ships are ready, we'll be able to sail all the way to Arbor Rank. With luck, before the darkness shows up here. How far south has it spread? I couldn't say. Hopefully not far. We'll get the prince back to his home and Hakon has already decided to come with us. There is not much else to go back to. The two look up as we approach. Gurk, it's time. Soon we'll be ready to leave Borosgard. Find somewhere safe. One ship is done already at the docks. I had it prepared for it for a let. I'm not ready to say this. Come, Gurk, it's time to honor your daughter. Oh. Uh -huh. 
And that is the end of the Butter Saga. Thank you very much. Hope you liked it. And I hope you'll be there to see another Butter Saga soon. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.